Justin Fields might be the most exciting quarterback in football, and he's playing incredible. I mean, what he's been able to do, some of these highlight reel level plays that he's making consistently, he's playing unlike any other quarterback in the NFL right now, but it's working, and it's working very well. So let's talk about what's going right for Justin Fields. So let's start off with this play. This is a very good play, kind of a play that, you know, part of me feels like you have to at a certain point if you are the team playing the Bears is just not let Justin Fields beat you with your, his legs, right? Which easier said than none, even if you make an effort to not, he still will probably beat you a time or two, uh, maybe even more than that. But that's kind of the mindset I think you have to have at this point. Stuff like this just can't be happening if you're the Lions, but it does happen because, you know, uh, teams are trying to stop the traditional handoff as well. It just puts a lot of stress on defenses where what's going to happen here is it's set up like an option play. I believe this is a design all the way, though. Fields is supposed to keep the ball. He's faking a handoff, but really it's going to be that edge rusher that's unblocked uh, on the edge, obviously. Watch uh, him here. Fields is going to take the snap, and Fields is going to start to run in that direction. Again, not even like a real fake there. He just, that's where he's running. And I think that he's, the Lion player is just too far to the inside, which I think sometimes while you're seeing this, I think people maybe don't fully realize just how fast Justin Fields is. Fields is one of the, you know, fastest quarterbacks out there. You have to really respect not just his size, but his speed. Because watch how Fields just completely blows by him right there. I mean, that's just too easy. So that's a great example of like, when you're watching film, don't let him beat you that way. Which, listen... If you stay too far to the outside, that will allow for the traditional handoff uh, running game to be a lot, you know, work a lot better. Absolutely. I think I take that because Fields is just too deadly to leave open in space like that. I think this play is actually a great example of what Fields is doing well and kind of what he's doing differently, I guess. I think, you know, I've been trying to figure out what exactly is the difference. And I think some people are saying, oh, it's obviously they're just having him run the ball more. Okay, sure. Yeah. But, but what else? What has gone well besides that? I think part of it is he's actually himself developed as a runner of the football. I think that's been an element of this. And I also think that uh, part of it is that he's making an effort to run the ball more, in, even in situations where I think a coach would tell you to throw the ball. I think he's kind of realizing, this is what my skill set is, is running with the football. I'm going to run with the football. So on this play, you see how it can work, right? It's a zone coverage play. This is the play that Matt Nagy ran a lot, actually, interestingly enough. But, you know, it's a concept that can work. This is a good play. Matt Nagy maybe ran it too much, but it is a play that can work. Fields is going to take the snap. He runs a play action and then has a rollout towards the left side of the field. And you see that Darnell Mooney is open right here. And I think that most coaches would teach you throw to Mooney on this play. I think that's what a traditional head coach would tell you or offensive coach in general would tell you. But I think that in this situation, they just say we would rather Fields have the ball than Darnell Mooney have the ball. Typically, the goal of a quarterback is to get the ball in your talented player's hands. But when he's probably their most talented player, you know, it makes sense for him to keep the football. So watch him instead keep the ball. He's going to run and not just pick up the first down, but pick up a decent amount more there. I think that's kind of the biggest shift I've seen is Fields is just making an effort to to scramble more right? Scrambling is a legitimate option in football. It doesn't have to be a last resort. People typically say you should wait, you know, try to make the pass first, and then if nothing gets open, run the ball. And for most quarterbacks, that is true, but most quarterbacks don't have the athleticism that Justin Fields has. So him treating scrambling just like another option instead of a last resort has absolutely been a, a key factor in him just, uh, I think, playing a lot better and just the team playing a lot better. We got to talk about this play because this was just uh, maybe like the greatest play of all time. I don't know. That's probably hyperbole, but you know, that's what I do here on this channel. Okay. Not the greatest play of all time, probably. Uh, but one of the greatest plays I've seen this week, definitely where it's an incredible play. You're going to have, it's designed to be a pick play to the offense's left. That's how on paper it's supposed to work on this third down and goal. Justin Fields takes a snap. He's going to run a play action and look in that direction, but it was not open. So now he's trying to scramble. So at this point, Aiden Hutchinson's kind of right there. And I mean, just pausing it right here, like, I just cannot believe that this ended up as a rushing touchdown. From right here, it would turn into a rushing touchdown. Just absolutely unbelievable. But, okay, so Hutchinson's kind of in this direction. So Fields is going to try to run towards the right. But watch both of them. Watch how Fields, you know, escapes a tackle, kind of a tackler lunged at him, was not quite able to make it. Hutchinson now overcommitted towards the top of the screen when Fields did that, but Fields has cut back towards the bottom of the screen. I mean, Justin Fields literally just 
uh, juked out an elite athlete in Aiden Hutchinson while at the same time uh, breaking a tackle. I mean, that's that's absolutely unbelievable that he did that. Again, he then has the speed to get around the edge and get into the end zone for a touchdown. Uh, he just missed a touchdown earlier. He gets into the end zone this time. Again, just just remarkable. I mean, absolutely remarkable stuff that I, I really do feel like Fields is a unicorn in this sense. I know there's been some Lamar Jackson comparisons, but you know when the Ravens offense was working, the passing game was just as big of a part of that offense as the running game was. We're seeing the passing game definitely come through here for Chicago as well and have a big impact. But even when it's not working, they're still able to move the ball and get touchdowns without it, which is something that we really don't see. I can't think of a great comparison of a guy like Fields who is doing it this way. I think it is kind of, he is a unicorn. I do think so. And of course, going over to the passing game, because again, like I said, I don't want to sit here and make it seem like the passing game isn't working. I mean, we saw some good passes here. And honestly, a big part of what makes the passing game work is the running game. The running game sets up stuff in the passing game in more traditional ways like play action and stuff, but in less traditional ways too, like something like this. It's a man coverage play, which typically you think that, uh, you know, a quarterback running isn't really going to help that much here, but it is because watch what happens. Fields takes a snap and Detroit paying a bit more attention now to Fields at this point. They have a spy on him, all that good stuff. So right here you have pay attention to that Chicago player for, uh, you know, who's getting ready to get into the end zone. This is Cole Komet. This would be his first touchdown of the day. It would not be his last, but what he's doing is he's kind of setting up as though he's blocking. So for Detroit uh, defender who's trying to get over there, he's now kind of thinking, okay, well, I might have to get around Komet to try and make a tackle on Justin Fields. So he, you know, really gets fooled badly there. Komet gets wide open and they're able to get into the end zone for a touchdown. So some people are going to sit here and say, oh, well, that was wide open. That was an easy throw for Fields to make, but it was wide open in part because of the stress that Fields' legs puts on opposing defenders. It just makes it that much more difficult. Even something like this, which, listen, some people are going to say, oh, this play, that was the blown coverage play. I mean, that's just bad defense, which it was. Yeah, we'll talk about why, you know, it was definitely a break by Chicago. But you also create your own breaks to some degree, and part of it is set up due to having a good running game, which is set up because of Justin Fields, which allows this whole play to work. So... First, take a look at uh, that tight end right there for Chicago. The Bears are going to run a play action here, and against the cover three zone that the Lions were in, they were expecting a run because it looked like it was a run. I get it. I would have probably expected a run there as well. You have a player who is wide open in the yellow circle right there. So Detroit sees this, but what can they do, right? I mean, the two guys who really realistically could come into play there are the two I've circled in black. You have the safety, but he's taking on Cole Komet deep down the field, and you have a corner, Jeff Akuda, but he has Darnell Mooney uh, towards the, you know, uh, towards the flat there to the top half of the screen. So both of those two guys are uh, away. The only other player who could really come in and disrupt this would be a linebacker if they stayed deep but as I mentioned they moved very far in because they bit on the play action now here's where the luck part comes in pay close attention to the safety here he was convinced it was gonna be a throw over the middle he takes a chance and it backfires Justin Fields read the play realized what happened and realized that the safety moved in and had a touchdown not every quarterback would have done that although you do expect the quarterback to make that read, but it was set up due to deception. Yes, you got caught a massive break with a safety making a poor decision, but you also took advantage of that, and that's what good NFL teams do, is they take advantage of their opponent's mistakes. I thought the sequence in the fourth quarter was hilarious, where he throws the pick six, and then a handful of plays later just runs through the entire Lions defense for a touchdown. Listen, Fields is still an imperfect player. He's still young. He still is growing. But right now, the good is outweighing the bad. And that's what's exciting about him. At least that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.